Okay, this is a new kind of video where we're actually going to go through some practical, basic um, math, basically, when it comes to making mutations. And we do it in a practical way because I'm not going to be super technical about it. And also, I'm probably not going to use the exact terms as they would be used um, in, genet in the genetics field. This is how the terms that we've coined in the ball python industry, and this is the basic way that we figure out genetics and figure out the results of clutches and how they will be. And it is very, very effective, and it's very important for you to understand it if you want to do ball pythons. So we're going to talk about the two basic terms. To start, we have two different types of mutation. We have codominant. You heard it codom a lot. But that is actually called, it's actually incomplete dominant. That's the actual term. We call it codom. Okay, that's one. The other one is recessive. Now these actually, people think they look work very differently from each other, but in reality is the genetics work exactly the same. The only difference is, is what you're able to know and not know about the clutch when they come out. And so we'll look at these and see how they actually differ, but in a lot of ways they work mathematically exactly the same as each other. So first of all, we're going to look at a codom clutch, a basic codom clutch, okay? And we're going to do it as, as simple as possible, okay? So we have, we're going to do a really simple pairing like a pastel to a normal, okay? Now when you look at pastel, what you got to know is that there's two copies on every chromosome of the snake, on every allele of, of the snake. So you have a pastel, it has a copy of the pastel gene and a copy of the normal. And when you breed this animal, it will send either the copy of the pastel or the copy of the normal into the offspring, but you don't know which. The normal on this allele will have a normal and a normal. So they only have two copies of the normal gene. Once you know that, you can actually run the genetics. So we'll make this the male here, and make this the female. And we'll run the Punnett square to find out what we got. So the male, We'll put him over here. So he has a pastel gene and a normal gene. The female has a normal gene and a normal gene. Okay, and we're going to draw the, the boxes because we have four options. We're going to have four squares. And these are the all the potential things that could come out of this clutch. You could have a pastel, which has one copy of the pastel, one copy of the normal. A pastel, again, pastel. And then, pulling a normal gene from there and a normal gene from here, you have a normal and a normal. So that means out of every four eggs, on average, you'll have two pastels and two normals, which is how the genetics work. It's simple math um, of how those genes get split. So now we're going to do two codoms, just to show how it works one more time. So we're going to do, we're going to do two codom genes. Let's do a really simple one that everybody will recognize, a bumblebee. So we have the same thing, we'll put the male as the pastel again. So the male will have one copy of the pastel gene and one copy of the normal gene. The female will have one copy of the spider gene and one copy of the normal gene. Okay, so when we actually do the pairing here, We'll put the male over here, he's got a copy of the pastel and a copy of the normal. The female will have a copy of the spider and a copy of the normal. So it's the same thing. So we've, this gets the, the pastel from the male and the spider from the female. Pastel from the male and a normal from the female. Normal from the male, spider from the female. And normal from the female, from the male and normal from the female. So there we have now all the options. This one is completely normal. And this one right here is your bumblebee. The other two was a pastel and a spider. So that's how you see when you put two codoms together, the average number of animals with both codoms will always be one and four, that, that one square. The exact same percentage will be normals. So usually in almost all these situations, whatever you have as your percentage to hit the ultimate snake of your pairing, that's also the exact same percentage to hit a completely normal animal in your pairing. But you see we also had a pastel and a spider in the clutch, and then one, one bumblebee and one normal.
Now we're gonna look at a basic recessive genetics and see how that works. Okay, so we're gonna do a het to a het pairing, okay? So what this'll do is, let's hold on, let me write this out. We're gonna do, we'll do pied, okay, as our, as our example. So a het pied will have one copy of the pied gene and one copy of the normal dominant gene. So it'll be just like, in a way, like our pastel, okay? And we're gonna do it to another het pied as the male. So, as I'm sure one of, all of you know that when you breed head to head, your odds are one in four. Now we're gonna see exactly why that is. So we have a copy of the pastel, copy of the normal, sorry, copy of the pied gene, copy of the normal, a copy of the pied gene, and copy of the normal. So this is head to head. So you see right there at the very beginning, you're getting your one in four is a visual pied. And then we have one that is het pied, right here, one that is het pied, and one that is normal. And then this is where the 66% het comes in. Because you see, you have our visual pied here, you have two that are hets and one that is normal. You don't know though, because they all look normal, because they're hets, you don't know which of these three are hets and which one's the normal. So out of every three, two of them will be 100% het pied. So we are saying that all three of these have a 66, a two-thirds chance of being het pied. And that is where that percentage comes from because we cannot know, but we know mathematically that two out of every three normals will be het. And so therefore it's 66% het. So now we've talked about 66% hets, and you're probably wondering how do we get 50% hets? 50% hets come from a het to a non-het pairing. So to do an example of that, we're gonna use the same thing. We're gonna use a het pied male and a female normal. Or it could be, this could be any codon, either of these could be any codons, we're just making it as simple as possible. So we have a het pied on the male side and a normal on the female side. So we're gonna run the same Punnett square the male will put over here, she's got one copy of the pi gene, one copy of the normal gene. The normal's gonna have two normals. Okay? So we have here, we have, well, let's run our, run our lines, a het pied, and here we have another het pied. But then down here, we're throwing normal. So we have a normal and a normal. So we out of, out of every four offspring, the average will be two normals, right down here, and two het pieds. Problem is, is the heterozygous animals are gonna look the same as normals. And so you're looking at, out of every four, two, so that's one half of the clutch, equals 50%. So these would be considered 50% heads. Now a lot of people think, okay, 50% head, that means that there's a 50% chance, or 50% of the babies will be head, or 50% of the babies will be visual from it. But no, the 50% is the odds that it is either het or not het. Okay, so once you breed this animal and you find out the answer is going to be that way from then on. So if you breed a 50% het and make piebalds from it, then you know it's 100% het from there on. You know it was one of these and not one of these. Because you cannot know the difference initially, that's why we call them 50% het. Okay, so now we're going to take a visual recessive to a head and see how those genetics go. So we're gonna do a visual pied, so it'd be pied, a visual. Instead of having one copy of the pied gene and one copy of the normal, it would have two copies of the pied gene like we just did, so two, two P's. Um, and our het, would be het, would have one copy of the pied gene and one copy of the normal gene still. Okay, so let's run the Punnett square. Again, we're just doing four, we're doing these really basic. They obviously get much more Intense. So the male would have two copies of the pi gene. The female would have one copy of the pi and one copy of the normal. We're doing the same thing. So here we get pied from both. You get pied from both parents, and here you get pied from one parent, pied from both parents again, and pied from one parent. Okay. So you see what we have here. We have the same thing as what we we're talking about when we do a codon to a normal. You have half the clutch is visual pied. So in a way, it works exactly like codoms. The difference is, is you can't see the heads. 
So we get 50% of the clutch is pieds and 50% of the clutch is het pieds. But these, because we're guaranteed from the dad to always have a pied gene thrown into every scenario, these are guaranteed to be 100% heads. That's why, that's why whenever you have any visual recessive in a pairing, every baby will always be 100% het. Anytime you ever have two het animals in a pairing, every baby will be 66% het, that is not visual. And when you go het to normal, it's all 50%. All right guys, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this little bit of a different style video. Um, it's very educational, but we get tons and tons of questions every week about how these genetics work and I hope that in a practical way, this makes some of it clearer so that when you do your clutches, you know what to expect. And uh, you know, math is everything in this, in this hobby because it really informs everything we do here at JKR. That's part of why I love it so much is the math plus the art put together into one really awesome hobby. So thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell so you get notified when we put up new videos. And thanks again for watching.